So a video or two ago, we checked out my new Dell PowerEdge R710, and I talked about upgrading the storage with eight 500 gig laptop drives. So on eBay, I found these blank drive caddies, and I ordered six of them because I already have two of them. So these come with the screws as well. This is why I picked them, if you can see there, four screws. And like I said, I have six of them. And so I will be throwing the new drives into these. And I also printed off these labels with that address label stuff. They just say 500 gig SATA 2 on them. And I made the labels blue because that's kind of like my channel's color or whatever. So pretty cool. I am going to finish unboxing these drive caddies and I guess continue with a time lapse of me installing the drives in them. I should mention these are actually really high quality. I'm quite impressed with them. They are metal and not plastic or cheap feeling in any way. I'm really surprised actually because the Listing had these going for super cheap, and I figured they'd end up being like cheap plastic ones, but I guess not. So like I said in the last video, I have these Seagate thin laptop drives. These are 500 gig, and I have eight of them. These drives have basically no runtime, probably three hours or less of full runtime on them. So I keep running into this issue with the drives where they're slightly too thick like that and it's not the drives it's the caddies and on the Dell caddies this screw is slightly loose and this side can wiggle back and forth these ones don't really do that so I can get away with just or well at least I can put the drive in here if I just squeeze it like that I'm not sure if that will actually fit but if we look at the actual Dell thing, it's not like like that at all. This is one of the new drives. I also have one of the Dell caddies with its screw stuck there. The screw is stuck in that caddy. I thought it was stuck in the drive, but I was able to twist the drive out of it, so that's kind of weird, but you can also see this one moves back and forth quite a bit. It looks like it's actually the other side on there, so I'm gonna take out my other drives and undo that and see if I can get the drives to fit a bit better. So loosening the one screw seems to pretty much have done the trick. It still bows out a little bit on the end there, but everything seems to be fine. So I have all the drives mounted and undoing the one screw helped a little bit, but there were still some weird fit issues with these, but it helped a lot if I kind of wiggled the one side, this one side of the bracket. And uh, yeah, so these are mounted and I'm going to cut out the labels for these. I'll probably do that off camera because it's too much footage to do that. And then we can mount these in the server. So these labels ended up being kind of too stuck to the tape, so I'm reprinting some. I also made the colors a bit lighter because these ones are too dark. And you can't really see it on camera, but it just looks kind of bad. It's too dark and everything. So I'm printing nine of them, so I have one extra. They're all 500 gigs, so I just copy-pasted the same label. And then I am making these tiny decals that are going to go in to this little cutout here, and those are just to tell what slot it is on the back plane. So here is the R710, and I have all these blank drive bays that seem to get dusty pretty quickly. I think those were clean when I got the server, which was like a week ago. So I have these blanking plates, like I said, that I have to remove. There were six of them that came with the server and two drives. So I put these labels on the inside of the 
caddies and some on the outside. So if I just kind of pop those in there, the labels turned out pretty nicely, I would say. Some of the drives have it on the outside, like I said. Those go in there. And I put it there on the outside, so they just kind of open up and go in there. I believe the other drives had our Windows install, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do for the OS, because I don't actually have like an SSD I could put in this, and it's not really happy about the drives being like wider than the slot, especially on this one. I might loosen this screw a bit more and yeah, that helped a lot, loosening that screw actually. So I could have sworn I set these drives down in a random order, but they all seem to be going in to the slots in the right order, which is kind of funny. Not really supposed to do that. And these almost look bent if you look at them. So I don't really know what's up with that, or maybe if I mounted them wrong or something, or they're twisted. Actually, yeah, they look kind of twisted in there. So I'm gonna have to figure out what's up with these, but they work well enough, I guess. So I'll just use them for now. I don't actually have a monitor hooked up to this right now because I'm working on my KVM switch. I ordered three more dongles for that. Those came with these drives, actually. Not the same seller, but the same truck, USPS. So let's turn this on and check out all those drives lighting up. I wonder if this optical drive works. I haven't actually tried it. I still haven't decided what kind of RAID array I'm going to be doing with these. RAID 5 or 6, obviously, but is it important enough where I need a RAID 6 to back everything up? So I'm going to have to kind of figure that out. I might actually reprint the labels for one or two of them with a different color scheme just to designate that that's the parity. But then again, I think RAID kind of puts it across all of the drives, not having two dedicated drives that run as parity. I'm going to turn off the basement lights here, and we can see what this looks like with just the lights, and it's nothing spectacular. I don't have the lights blinking yet, so I guess the next step is to configure a RAID array on this. So I'm going to configure the RAID array in a few minutes here, but for now we have some more hardware upgrades to do. So I picked up this 16 gig USB 2 flash drive. I actually got it off Amazon and they sent me two of them again. So they didn't respond this time either. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm not complaining. So this is going in there. This is going to host the hypervisor. I'm probably putting ESXi on this. As you'll see in a few videos from now, I've kind of started using ESXi for everything. I'm planning on running it on the server, the main server down here once I set that up. And the dual 1366 PC is also going to use ESXi. I think it would be interesting to play with like clustering and that kind of thing. So that's why I have so many ESXi hosts running, or I plan to at least. So I'm going to slide this out here and it shouldn't hit the tripod, and actually I should probably move this so we can see what I'm doing. So I'll just pop the flash drive in there, probably the easiest thing in this entire system to install. I will be installing dual PCIe cards in here. The first one is this QLogic fiber channel card. This is a dual 8 gig fiber channel card, and I want to experiment with SAM applications and all that kind of stuff. So this is going in there. This came out of the net backup 5230. I had like five of these in there. The other PCIe card I will be installing is this 250, I think that's a 256 gig MacBook Air SSD on this adapter. This was going to go on my gaming computer, but I just got a normal SSD for that. So I just kind of have this laying around. I'll eventually be using some kind of other SSD in this, but I had this laying around, so might as well put it to use. It's actually kind of sketchy, so I might actually leave it in here as the actual SSD for this. 
So I think the way we open this is we like pop that out or something. And I'm gonna be lazy and not pull out the riser because there's all kinds of stuff connected to it with the perk and everything. So I'm just gonna pull out those two slots and set those aside. And which one of these is slot one? I think the top one is. So I will throw the fiber channel interfaces in the second slot. I hope that doesn't get too hot with the RAID controller sitting right there. And then I'll throw the SSD in above that. And that seems to have worked out pretty well. Actually, the SSD isn't really sitting in there right, but it never does. There's some kind of tolerances messed up on that. So I'll just pop in the retention bracket, if that's the right way of it going in. There we go. So this server now has a fiber channel neck and a couple more storage devices. And that's all I'm gonna be upgrading it with for now. I think I'm just gonna leave it this way for a while actually. So I guess we'll just configure the storage array on these drives. I think I'm gonna go with RAID 6, so dual parity space. However RAID does its calculation, I don't know. So I have to have my KVM running before I start any of the servers. So that's what that noise is. So let's go ahead and fire up the R710. And select that on the KVM. There are the fiber channel cards and then control R to get into the RAID controller. So no configuration present. I think if I hit enter, yep, we can select that. So RAID 6 and then select all of those drives. And what should we name this? I'm gonna call this raid pool. Raid pool. And then advanced settings, we don't really need that. I don't really know about any of these policies. I'm gonna have to learn about that at some point. So I guess we can just deselect advanced settings, go to OK. I think there was an initialize thing, but doesn't really matter, I guess. This is just a test thing, and you can see everything's just like off to the side there. It's annoying, but let's go ahead and hit OK. And yeah, uh, I think that's done. So OK, and then Control-Alt-Delete to reboot. So I was having some trouble getting the server to boot off of the flash drive in the front kind of port. The installation completed just fine, but if we go to boot sequence, you can see my flash drive doesn't show up. And that's because we have to go to hard drive sequence here, go down. To move that option up, we hit the minus key on this keyboard, and that puts it up there, and then enter, and then boot sequence, and then we go down here, hit the minus key again to bring that up to the top, and then enter, and exit, and save, and it should boot into the ESXi drive now. So if we go over to devices, we can see the 16 gig flash drive. We have our RAID 6 array, and our 256 gig MacBook Air SSD. We also have two optical drives, and I believe one is the internal and one is the Avacent because it does some kind of emulation or something. And under adapters, we have our dual fiber channel ports on the single HVA. Those, of course, are both not set up yet. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. This server is going to make an awesome testing platform. Going into future plans a little bit, like I mentioned earlier, I want to experiment with clustering and high availability, and I think it would be interesting to get an R510 for this and maybe dual R610s to go up there in those spaces if I'm pointing the camera in the right place. And that would let me experiment further with clustering, even though I don't have a use for it in my home lab. I think I mentioned earlier I also want to experiment a lot with SAN and 
fiber channel storage networks and stuff like that. I'm being really frugal at the moment. Actually, it doesn't really seem like that, but I am, at least when it comes to unnecessary purchases like an entire fiber channel storage network or more servers to fill up my rack. But once again, I think that's all I have to cover in this video. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.